Hello students. Today we are going to discuss TEDx talk by Dr. Vandana Shiva, Solutions to the Food and Ecological Crisis Facing Us Today. Who is Vandana Shiva? She is an Indian scholar, environmental activist, ecofeminist, anti-globalization author. She is based in Delhi and she has written more than 20 books. She is called as Gandhi of Grain for her activism associated with anti-GMO movement, that is genetically modified organism. She is one of the leaders and board members of the International Forum on Globalization and a figure of the anti-globalization movement. She starts her speech by telling, why did she not stay on in the Bhava Atomic Research Center where she worked for some time? And why did she go back to her hometown in Dehradun? And why is she doing what she is doing now? That is, you know, fighting for uh, the environment, why she is involved in that. She tells that how the people, how the uneducated women of Himalayas, how they made the policy makers of our country to change the policy. Their deepest love for the forest brought about a change in a very non-violent way. She's talking about the Chipko movement where these uneducated peasant women, they hugged the trees and did not allow cutting down of trees. These farmer women, these peasant women made, you know, the biodiversity experts to change the policies of this country. Now, what is the policy that was changed? It was earlier believed that timber was the most important product of the forest of the Himalayas. However, after the Chipko movement, it was said it is not timber, but soil, water, and pure air. These are the most important things in the forest of the Himalayas. She was a part of this movement. She was a volunteer in this movement. And there are two most important things that she learned by being a part of volunteer of this Chipko movement. First, nature is not out there. We are all part of nature. Second, protecting nature is not a luxury. That means that in order, like if we want to survive, we need to protect nature. It is a necessity. It is not a luxury. And we are all a part of nature. These are the two important lessons she learned from the Chipko movement. And then she goes on to say that how the prime minister once said that environmentalism is a problem because it interferes with growth. She strongly believes that environmentalism is not a problem. These are her, this is her reason. First, the foundation of every economic activity is the rivers, the land, the forest, the biodiversity. So if someone wants to conduct any economic activity, one has to depend on these things. So environmentalism cannot be a problem according to her. Then she speaks about the reality of food in India today. She says that approximately half to three quarters people are not getting enough food to eat. Around two lakh farmers have committed suicide in the last 10 years between 1997 to 2007. And a million children are dying every year for lack of food. She also cites a, a survey in which 
it was found that before the new economic policies, there wasn't drastic hunger in tribal areas. But now we see drastic hunger in tribal areas. And one of the reasons is the economic, the new economic policies. Now, she talks about an unprecedented, something that has never happened before in a long, long history. That is the suicide of two lakhs farmer in just 10 years, as I said, between 1997 to 2007. Then she goes and talks about synthetic fertilizers. Now, how the government of India is giving 1.3 trillion rupees as subsidies for poisoning our soil for the synthetic fiber, which she believes and which actually poisons the soil. The amount that the government of India is spending is more than the defense budget of our country. And all this to poison our soil. This is what is the real concern for her. And then she says, some people are concerned about children malnutrition. Some other people are concerned about climate change, whereas some other people are concerned about the land. But then she goes on to say that all these things are not different issues. They are all interconnected. They're all interconnected through a very perverse way of thinking, very unreasonable way of thinking that we have inherited from a highly patriarchal form of thought. And this thought she calls as capitalist patriarchy. And what has uh, this uh, capitalist patriarchy, what has it given us? It has given us an assumption that nature is dead when it is very much alive. So capitalist patriarchy makes us believe that nature is dead, when in reality, nature is very much alive. Also, it makes us believe that we have to declare nature dead to establish man's empire over nature. Now, then she goes on to talk about how she had been to IIT Kanpur to discuss the whole issue of the cleaning of the river Ganga. She says that, you know, the government, uh, the government is finding it very difficult to clean the river Ganga despite spending millions of rupees. Now, why, what is the reason that we are not able to clean the river? She says that, you know, everything is in, we should see everything as a cycle. And, uh, but then we have broken the cycle, the cycle of nutrition that should go back to the land is actually going as pollution to the rivers. You know, the nutrition uh, that is there in the soil should go back to uh, the rivers. But what we are doing, we are polluting the land and we are polluting the land by use of these chemical synthetic fertilizers and uh, what happens, it flows into the river. So it is very difficult to clean the river. So what solution she suggests? She suggests good town planning and good sanitation can prevent the problem of, you know, the river getting polluted and the problem of soil infertility. So these two things can help cleaning the rivers, stop river pollution, and also uh, will prevent soil infertility. Now, then she talks about the monoculture of mind. Now, what is monoculture of mind? Monoculture of mind means it is a mechanistic thought that makes us blind to diversity. We cannot see diversity in nature. We cannot see diversity around us. It has destroyed this monoculture of mind 
has destroyed the food systems. We think that we are growing more food, but if we are growing more food, then why is there a scarcity of food? Why are people starving? This is all because of monoculture of mind. And even if the green revolution, she says, if the green revolution had given us more food, why is it that half of India wouldn't be, you know, in that case, half of India wouldn't be starving today, you know? And what has this monoculture of mind done? It has succeeded in transforming India from the land of abundance, the land of pulses, from being a land of all seeds, cereals and millets into a land where we are importing dals and now we are making fake dals. It is all because of this monoculture of mind. We are now, we have destroyed our land and, uh, you know, we don't value our pulses, our seeds, our cereals, our millets. People have stopped eating millets. And what, what are we doing now? We are importing dals from foreign countries and we are making fake dals. She uh, says, you know, we all, uh, how Apple has given us, iPod, Apple has given us, iPad, it has also given us iPhone. And the government is now giving us iDal. Now, what is iDal? It is not a dal, actually. It is basically soya bean, which is reconstituted and colored yellow. Now, she says, you know, if we fake food like this, we can fake the supermarket shelf. We can fake the customer, but we cannot fake our body. A body need, it needs nutrition. It needs healthy food. We cannot fake that. Then she goes on to say that, you know, how we use 10 units of inputs to produce one unit of food and how inefficient can it be? And uh, then we are creating scarcity. Scarcity by turning seed for which one seed gives a thousand. And the reason why millets are called millets is that one seed of millet can give thousand seeds, but we have stopped eating millets. Millets are now forgotten foods. So, uh, so what she's telling is we should try and eat millets. We should encourage. So when people start eating millets, so there'll be more demand for growing millets. And when millets are grown, they will produce more seeds and we can have more crop and that too naturally. So, but instead of creating more seeds, we are actually preventing multiplication of seeds. How are we preventing multiplication of seeds? Of course, we are not taking millets. Uh, that's one way how we are not creating more seeds for agriculture. But then we are, instead of creating, we are actually preventing uh, multiplication of seeds. Now, how, how are we preventing multiplication of seeds? Through genetic engineering, through, uh, I spoke about GMO in the beginning. So by genetically engineering the seeds, by creating terminator seed, which is known as suicide seeds, where in the second generation of seed, no other crop can grow, that it is used only for one set of farming. So terminator seed and through patenting. Now, what is patenting? Uh, you know, some companies patent their seeds and it makes illegal for farmers to save their own seeds. So if you a farmer is using patented seed, the farmer cannot save or store that those seeds uh, through his crop to grow it the next year. So through these methods, we are actually preventing multiplication of seeds. So what are the, then she goes on to talk about the reasons for farmer suicides, high cost seeds. So we are not growing millets. We are not uh, letting farmers, uh, you know, 
preserved seeds because of uh, because of patenting uh, and we use the suicidal seeds so the cost of seed is very high for farmers uh, now high cost of chemicals chemical pesticides uh, chemical fertilizers and the loan which the farmers the debt the loan that the farmer takes from the bank uh, and there's no insurance and all uh, but then she doesn't talk about insurance though so these are the reasons why farmers in india commit suicide now how to change this genocidal and ecocidal system where large number of people are getting killed that is farmers and where the environment the ecology uh, is also getting killed how can we change this situation first we have to recognize that biodiversity is not a problem second uh, the uh, the separation that that have been made between those who grow the food and those who eat the food if only that link could be closed you know miracles start can start to happen and the third she says is citizen action now uh, now what is this she uh, says is you know the separation between uh, people who grow the food and people who eat the food it should be closed this link should be closed and then she talks about the paradox the more we eat biodiversity the more we grow it if we eat more variety of uh, food you know when we then we grow more variety of varieties of food so we used once upon a time we used to eat 8500 crops now we are eating eight commodities so that that is what is killing biodiversity so she talks about this paradox where the more we eat you know biodiversity the variety of things the more we will be motivated to grow it and if we eat millets if we don't eat millets who will grow it if we don't ask for authentic dal it will not be grown in this country so that is the paradox she talks about and then then she goes on to say that eating eating is an ethical act eating is an ecological act eating is an ag agricultural act and the root cause of huge food and agrarian crisis agrarian means related to agriculture is that we are forgetting about our agriculture we are forgetting about field farmers we are forgetting about seed we are forgetting about the soil that means we don't care about agriculture we don't care about the farmers who work in the field we don't care about what kind of seeds are being used for farming we have forgotten about all these things we have also forgotten about our soil which is getting polluted uh, because of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides so because we don't care about all these things these are the reasons root cause of huge food and agrarian crisis now what should you uh, throw your weight behind what should you support you should make the right choice either we can support ecosystem diversity farmers or we can if we support or we can support greed super profits and ill health the choice is ours she says we have to make the choice we have to either support that is put your weight behind means support ecosystem diversity farmers or greed super profits and ill health greed super profit and ill health uh, these are the things which are killing planet and people the choice is ours and then she ends her speech by telling us to eat right and to think holistically thank you very much and uh, all the pictures used in this presentation they all taken from the internet Thank you.